This narrow strip of coastline and offshore islands is exposed to all the elements. And I mean all the elements. It's one of the most brutal environments on the planet. Which is another way of saying it's bloody cold and full of animals that can kill you. Over the years, the locals have adapted to the harsh conditions and created delicious food from their wild bounty. And I can't wait to explore. To start my wild adventure, I'm meeting a chef and hunter who is redefining Alaskan food. He wants to take me to his favorite picnic spot. That just happens to be almost 3,000 feet up a mountain. But it's Alaska, which means snowstorms. So he sent me this flashy set of wheels to drive to the top. Lino! Garden! Oh, man! Welcome to Alaska. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Lionel Udipper is one of Alaska's top chefs. He's trained in some of the best restaurants in the world, and he is now the executive chef at Salt in Juneau. He's gained a reputation for creating incredible flavor combinations from the wild ingredients of this glacial wonderland. Oh, boy. It is freezing. A little bit. Did you bring some lunch? I did. I'm starving. All right. Well, I'm going to have you put these snowshoes on. We're going to go on a little adventure. Snowshoes? Yes. So what do you think about Alaska so far? Uh, bloody hard. This is insane. Do you want to move here? In the summer, yes. <laughs> Lionel has been hiking and hunting in this freezing wilderness since he was 18. Man. Whereas I've lost all feeling in my face and hands. Any coffee nearby? Coffee? <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Gordon, get up. Let's Taking go. a rest. Don't you do triathlon? I do, but not in the <laughs> snow. <laughs> Lionel lured me up here with the promise of an incredible view. But in this whiteout, the only thing I can see is the end of my nose. Wow, look at this view. I just hope we can still have lunch. That is beautiful. This is amazing. <laughs> Last one's all about survival. Yep. So you used to this kind of terrain for like six, seven months of the year? Yes, yeah. Amazing. When Alaska turns green, that's when we do a lot of our foraging, right. our hunting, our fishing, and we do our best to preserve these ingredients so yeah. that we have them throughout the winter time. Yeah, amazing. Um, and some of those ingredients I brought with us, and I want to share with you. This mug. Thank you. I'm going to give you some uh, chaga tea to warm you up. Chaga is a, a mushroom that's harvested on birch trees. There's a little bit of fireweed honey in this. Beautiful. Cheers, man. Thank you. Wow. Oh, it's high in antioxidants, along yeah. with other vitamins. Nice. It's a fungus. That's delicious. That honey helps it as well, doesn't it? Give that little touch of sweetness in there as well. Yes. And then I also brought some other goodies for us. What is that? Moose sticks. Moose sticks? Yes. <laughs> Stop messing around. No, moose. I'm, I'm serious. Moose sticks? Yes. So it's like a moose sausage. Correct. <laughs> it's light. It's mm. quiet. I eat a lot of these when I go hunting, or you don't want the deer to hear you chew, right? Right. So you got to keep as quiet as possible. Are you still hungry? This right here is king salmon belly. King salmon belly. Uh -huh. Wow. That is delicious. Fatty, delicious, salty, smoky. Mm -hmm. And this we smoke for about eight hours. Really? Mm -hmm. That's like one of the most exciting little backpacks I've ever seen on the mountain. Um, my favorite has to be the moose stick. Thank you. This is just a small tasting of what we have to offer to Alaska. Mm -hmm. In order for you to really engage with this land, I'm going to send you off to Huna, Alaska. So you're going to be going that way, where you right. can't see anything. Lionel wants me to start my journey in Huna to learn about the wilderness from the residents in this remote community, and then meet him back here at the end of the week to cook for some local legends. We're going to cook in front of a, a bunch of fishermen. Right. And let me tell you, they're going to judge the hell out of you. Fishermen are now Alaskans food critics, right? Yes. And anything else to be aware of? Don't get eaten by a bear. Big bears? Big bears. You wouldn't be sleeping this time bigger of year? Than you. Or bigger than me. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, sir. How's it good going? Good, good to see you. Good, good to see you too, bud. Yeah. What an amazing place. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now, Lionel said it will be an adventure, but he didn't tell me we were going to climb. Bloody hell. We're going to ascend up some ropes cool. and just... go get some old man's beard at the top of this cliff right here. Oh, Make some tea with it, and it's very good. And that's the only place up there that houses the old man? That's the only place. If Chef Lionel had told me I was climbing a 60-foot cliff, I would have packed a 61-foot ladder. You're nuts. Nah, this is just what we do up here in Alaska, you know? <laughs> first All things right. first. I got a harness for you. Let's grab this. Put your left leg in here. Got to bring the hot water for the tea. Yes. People usually take weeks to learn a new climbing technique. I've had five minutes. So right hand as high as it'll go. Yep. Now lift up your left foot. Push your right, right arm up. Yeah, there you go. Now push up with your left foot. Push up and get that right arm up there. You got it. I'm at the end of my rope in more ways than one. So. Yep. You got it? It's kind of like a burst of energy. Like yeah. explode with your left foot, get yeah. your right arm up. My left one come up. <laughs> you doing good? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Look at where we're at. Isn't this awesome? There's got to be an easier way for a cup of tea. This is the best way. Quick breather, 10 seconds. Yeah. That is a lot harder than you think. Check this out. <laughs> We're almost halfway there. Oh, my. Yeah, I've got an idea. Let's swing over here. Yeah. I wonder if that'll help a little bit. I'm struggling up a 60-foot cliff in Huna, foraging for a medicinal herb to make a hot drink with. Afternoon tea clearly requires a lot more work around here. You ready to give her go again? Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so lean back away from the cliff, and you got to get over this edge, and we're pretty much home free. One of the most remote rock pillars in southeast Alaska. Isn't this freaking awesome? It is incredible. I mean, this is survival right up here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it is. I've gone to some. You gotta be prepared for anything coming at you. Look at the storm we got rolling yeah. in. I was like relaxed because I honestly thought I was gonna have to rappel down because the ascent was becoming more difficult than I thought. I've never been a quitter, but um, the adrenaline took over. Good job, man. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Uh, look at that over there. Yeah. That's it there, the old man's beard. Yeah, this is it. It actually looks like your beard as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. In terms of, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, look. Yeah, exactly. How does it look? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've grown a goatee. Yeah. Uh, Just that. like that. Amazing. <laughs> Perfect. All right this tea. So, <laughs> Are you ready or what? Yes. How old were you when you first started these kind of uh, climbs? Oh, I was like, I think I was 13 when I 13. tried climbing for the first time. So I it's... mean, it was nothing gnarly, but, oh you know, I started getting in the mountains and I got hooked. Yeah. So here I am. That's amazing. Cheers, buddy. Good job. Cheers. <laughs> wow. So that's a cross between a sort of bay leaf stroke mint with a little touch of rosemary in there. <laughs> uh, it's a big difference there. Kind of tastes like it, huh? These are spruce tips right here. Gotcha. Wow. Wow. Locals have been harvesting these bitter, lemony spruce branch tips for years. That's amazing. Isn't that's that amazing. Good? Oh, my God. 
I'm starting to understand how hard it is to find food during the Alaskan winter. It really is survival of the fittest out here. But after a hard day's fishing yesterday, I need a drink. So I'm going to break the ice with a woman who is turning the local glaciers into somewhat of a delicacy. Michelle, good morning. May I come aboard, madam? Yes, you may. Thank you. Oh, man. Woof. It's a 90-minute ride to the Tracy Arm Fjord. Michelle is going to show me how to harvest free-floating icebergs to turn into pristine ice cubes. I'm a big fan of cocktails. Yes. But what's going to be the significant difference with the ice coming from the glacier? When you have this type of ice, not only are you having the best ice in the world, but you're having the whole experience of Alaska in a glass. But it soon became apparent that this particular Alaskan experience wasn't going to be confined to that glass as we hit some seriously rough seas. Where are we going, Gordon? <laughs> we're going to... <laughs> Which... <laughs> we're going... It feels like we're going <laughs> under. Oh, my God, it's what a so journey. gorgeous. It's beautiful. So we're looking for what size? For so what we want to look for is something that's very rounded. Right. Uh, what about that one? That's a... No, Gordon, I don't think that one's going to work. That's like your own private island. Wow, um, let's try this one here to the left. The white one at 11 o'clock. 10,000 years in the making. These glaciers produce the purest ice imaginable. I like that one. Perfect for cocktails. So. The secret behind this is... Screwing. <laughs> screwing these into the big block. Yes. And then after that, we're going to hook it up and we're going to hoist it on board. Gotcha. This is the most work I've ever done in ice cube in my entire life. <laughs> I hope this is going to make it's the gonna best be cocktail. It's going to be fabulous. Just trust me. Right. You ready? Yes. OK, start screwing. We're going to hook it up to a D-ring. And if it's not all the way in, it's going to crack the ice. You have to kind of be, like, over the water, you know, so you're on top of it. Let's just make sure they're really down deep. Are you kidding me, Michelle? They can't get any further in there. OK, let's just... Holy just... fingers are freezing. See, look, yours is coming out. Mine's coming out? Yeah, you got to get that in deeper. Deeper? Yeah, you're not all the way in. When we pull that up on the wench, it's going to crack. Perfect. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Amazing. So you take that outer layer off. And then you get to some of those ice diamonds. Look at this. Oh, that's, that's so gorgeous, beautiful. right? Look at that formation. Should we put that in a glass? Shall we? Got it in there. Wow. Oh, I like how that. And what do you think? Throw a little scotch. It's a good one. Yeah. And now we need a little vermouth. I feel like one of the luckiest mixologists anywhere on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord. Look at that. Look at the colors. I think we've earned it. Cheers. Good health. Cheers. Look at that. What an ice cube. Oh, my lord. <coughs> oh. <laughs> That's strong. I think it's 110 proof. <coughs> Amazing. Cheers. Well done. I have bars, but I've never, ever touched an ice cube that's that perfect. And it just tasted so clean and fresh and slightly effervescent in a way that it was almost uh, lightly sort of um, carbonated. And a great way, I think, to toast the beginning of this incredible cook with an amazing cocktail laced with glacier ice cubes.